Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be ranking all of the palettes that I tried in the month of April. There are nine palettes here that I'm going to be mentioning. So if you wanna see what came out the worst and what came out on top, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And eyeshadows in particular are my favorite, hence why I have this whole series dedicated to ranking all of the new palettes that I've tried. So we're gonna start off with number nine, and I feel like some people are going to get offended, but truthfully, Ugh, this palette made me angry. I'm wearing it today and I was gonna rank this like one or two spots higher, but then I got super angry with application today, giving it the ninth spot. So this is the Melt Cosmetics Mary Jane palette. And I know Heather Austin, I was watching her monthly rankings video and this I believe was like her number one. She really, really loves this. So don't let my review of this scare you, but Personally, for me and the way that I apply eyeshadow, me and this palette do not get along. It's way, way, way too chunky for me. It makes a mess. And that's my biggest fault in this palette is the huge mess that it makes. Because you can certainly make all of the shades in here work. You have to use a glitter glue and you cannot do your face makeup first. But the way that I do makeup and I enjoy the process, I do not like to do my eye makeup first to make a palette work. And you really have to work these shimmers onto the eyelid, press them, and they're gonna get everywhere if you're not using a glitter glue. And I don't mind using a glitter glue, but for the price that this palette is, and for the amount of other eyeshadow palettes that I don't need to make such efforts to make this work, I just do not like this. Today, my makeup, from afar, it probably looks good, but if you look really close to my under eyes, there are little black specks underneath my eyes because this shade got everywhere. You can even see in the palette, there's like chunks everywhere because the colors are so messy. Now, not all of the colors are bad in here. Uh, the mattes are really, really great. They're very blendable. They have a lot of pigment. They're awesome to work with. And there's a couple shimmers in here as well. Like these three, they're fine. I don't have an issue with them. They have a lot of glittery dimension that's super pretty. But these three mattes really ruin this palette for me. I am not able to make it work. And they're the three shades that add dimension to a look and the particularly these two out here, which are extra chunky. These are what is going to lighten the look up for me. I need it for dimension. And so if those palettes are at a commission for me, along with this shade right here, it doesn't leave me with many options, I feel, to create a look that I personally would enjoy. So for me, this did not work out at all. It's a huge mess. And while the looks you can get are pretty, and I could certainly make this work and create stunning looks with this, I can't justify the price. I just think the amount of work that goes into this for the price is crazy. Uh, the next palette that I have is also one that I think is quite overpriced. This is the Dior Summer Dune Quint. So this is in the shade Mirage. So this is from Dior's new summer collection. I did a whole video on new Dior makeup and I picked up this palette and it is beautiful. It has this like tie-dye print on it. The problem is like all of these shades look almost the same. There's literally no depth in this. The one, I was gonna put the Melt Cosmetics over this one, but this one doesn't make a mess and I actually really like my eye makeup with this one. It's just like you can only get one look with this. So if you don't like the one look that you can get, then you will not like this. It's really pretty, it's nice for summer. The quality itself is really nice. It's just in the color selection here that I think it was really a miss. It's, it's a pretty sheer luxury formula, but they're all the same shade. So for the price that a Dior Quint is, this is not worth it at all. The 
Number seven palette is the Huda Beauty Carmel Brown Palette. Now this Brown Obsessions collection came out right at the very, very beginning of April. And overall, I just wasn't super in love with this collection. There's still a couple more palettes in this line that I will share with you. Uh, this one was my least favorite. Uh, it's a mixture of color story, but also the shimmers are a bit lackluster in here and a few of the mattes also lack some pigmentation. It's just not Huda's best formula, but it's definitely workable. Like I feel like the Melt Cosmetics formula is not workable. This one is a workable formula. It's a decent price. It's just not a palette that I found myself wanting to grab for. Number six is the adorable Too Faced Teddy Bear Palette. Now this is when we're getting a turnaround and I'm speaking pretty positively about the rest of these palettes. This is so cute. I picked this up during the Sephora VIB sale. It is much smaller than I originally thought. Here's the Melt Palette. Now the Melt Palettes are kind of big, but regardless, do you see how tiny this is? It's so lightweight. It's so great for travel and it's just a solid palette overall. I'm not overly impressed with the formula. I just think they all work good. You get a nice look. I'm not disappointed with any of the looks that I create. You know, the shimmers, they're fine. The mattes, they're nice. They blend. They do what they're supposed to do. It's not extraordinary. And there are a few Too Faced palettes, believe it or not, that I do feel have an amazing formula. This isn't that formula, but it's also not their crappy formula either, which they also have in their line. It's right in the middle. I definitely think the price is right for this. That's the thing. This is not an overpriced palette at all. The price is right. The quality you're getting for this price is right. It's so cute and tiny. And if you're interested in this, I do recommend it. It's just it's so cute to throw in your purse. Okay, so I have like five palettes that I'm counting as one for number five, just because they all are in the realm of the same quality and you also have to dig into multiple ones to create a look. Now this was gifted to me in PR from Maven Beauty and they sent over their eyeshadow quads. First let's talk about the packaging. Me like acrylic packaging. I just I think because I do uh, bridal makeup and like I'm in that I'm in the makeup artistry industry I just like to see the colors that I'm grabbing. Now these are interesting by the way, if you didn't know, this is Fashion Nova's makeup brand, but you definitely wouldn't be able to tell. These guys are made in the USA and they have a really nice formula. Now what's interesting about these, like this is called a soft blend. So these are the blending shades. We have the spotlight shades is what they call this one. This one is the bold blend. So you get the bolder shades. There's medium blend. So these are supposed to be the medium toned crease shades. And then we have, of course, the defined. So basically all of the shades are going to be in the same depth for each quad. So you have to dig into multiples, which I don't really like that. I like a palette to encompass a whole look as opposed to certain duties for a particular palette. So you don't have to go into multiple ones, but it's an interesting concept. And the quality is really, really nice. The shades that I have at least, they're all very, very basic colors, nothing crazy unique. The mattes in particular, I think is where the formula stands out. Really pigmented, really blendable, but also not too pigmented where it shouldn't be too pigmented. The only disappointing one maybe is a spotlight one. These aren't bad, but they're just a solid, okay shimmer formula. I could do without these, honestly. I think the mattes are just super easy to work with. So I've been enjoying playing with these a lot. Number four, we're back to Huda Beauty Brown Obsessions. We have Toffee Brown. Now, if you are into collecting Huda palettes and you're looking for the one that's the most unique in the Huda line, definitely get the Toffee if you were interested in this collection. This is the one where you're not gonna have as many dupes within the Huda line. Of course, it still is not the most unique. I would recommend checking out my review on all three of these palettes. You'll kind of see which shades are a little bit more weak and which shades are really good quality. These palettes across the board are pretty and consistent, but they aren't bad quality. This one I really love for the color story. I think it's beautiful and I think I get a very, not necessarily unique, but it's a different type of neutral look than I normally do. 
Now this one, number three, is my favorite in the Huda line. This is the chocolate brown. Again, I think like this shade right here didn't give me the pigment that I wanted and there's a couple shimmers in here that required some building up. But other than that, I really enjoy the tones in this one. It really is easy to pick this up and create a full look that's really pretty. With all three of the brown obsessions palettes from Huda, I haven't created a look that I didn't like. It might have taken a little bit of extra effort to get there, but but for the most part, the curation, as always, is on point from Huda, and this one is my favorite of the three. Number two, quality on this one is spectacular. This is from Heen Dash. This is the Beautopsy palette. Of course, I do have a full review on this palette. It's kind of advertised as a multi-purpose palette. So I did do in my demo it for contour, bronzer, blush, highlight. I don't really love it for contouring the face. I just think I couldn't get the perfect match for myself. It's the kind of thing where you could do it if you didn't bring any other bronzer or contour shades. But other than that, I think it worked beautifully for blush. It worked beautifully for highlighting the face and shading it in that kind of way. And then eyeshadows incredible. This is such a silky formula. Now, initially the look of this palette, it really did not appeal to me. And even kind of looking at it now, it's kind of boring. Like it is, but the quality is just so silky and I've loved the looks that I've come out with so far. It's a different palette for me. And I have these colors individually. It's not something that I don't already own in my collection, but I think the formula is really silky and it's soft it has good pigment but it's not super pigmented which i prefer that because it makes the shadows easier to work with and it makes sense and it makes them more versatile for application in multiple places on the face overall this is a beautiful beautiful palette i just think what's making this stand out for me is the quality and it's really opened up my eyes to all matte makeup looks which it's not something that I do very often, but every time I wear this, I'm like, yes, I'm feeling my makeup. Okay, number one, um, kind of a sin that I have an e.l.f. palette as my number one palette because it's so cheap, but this did recently restock, and I mean, looking at what I tried this month, we had some disappointing palettes. This was my favorite, my most used, the one that I wanted to reach for of all my new palettes. This is the e.l.f. and Jen Atkin collection. It is the lighter shade. They also have a darker one, but obviously I didn't need the darker one. I really enjoy the packaging, that acrylic again. It's a $14 palette. It's very, very sturdy packaging wise. And these colors are super duper boring. There's nothing inspiring about this at all, but the quality is so amazing for the price and you just get a great everyday makeup look with this. It's easy to grab for because you have the face colors as well. Check out my April favorites video. I actually put this in my favorites video and I used the highlight as an all over lid shade and you guys were so impressed with how it looked and you loved my makeup and it's crazy to think that it was with a $14 palette but this has knocked my socks off. Now in terms of quality, you know, like the Hindash is a better quality palette and I do think even like the Too Faced is a bit better quality, but for $14, you really cannot beat it. It's like a foolproof palette and I think so many of you guys would really enjoy it and we love a good bargain. All right, you guys, there we have it. That was my ranking of all of the palettes that I tried in April. I must admit, kind of a disappointing month, lots of boring palettes. <laughs> Palettes and a lot of disappointing ones as well. So we will see how May is looking so far. I have a couple palettes that I'm really liking that I've tried so far in May. So I'm excited for that video already. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.